In this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the idea of living in a world of illusions created by an unknown alien intelligence that understands us but we don't understand it. He suggests that this spiritual enslavement may be impossible to break out of because this intelligence knows how to manipulate us. Harari goes on to talk about the rarity of intelligent life in the universe and the tension between intelligence and happiness. He highlights the distinction between intelligence and consciousness and argues that consciousness is far more valuable than intelligence. He also explores the possibility of intelligence existing without consciousness and vice versa. Five minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the connection between organic biochemistry and consciousness. He raises the question of whether all conscious entities, whether on Earth or in the universe, must be based on carbon or if other elements like silicon can also give rise to consciousness. Harari admits that the jury is still out on whether computers can become conscious, but he believes that AI represents a form of alien intelligence that is fundamentally different from human consciousness. He also explores the idea that aliens may already be present among us, highlighting the importance of expanding our understanding of life, intelligence, and consciousness beyond a human-centric perspective. Harari further talks about the social conventions and relationships that influence our perception of consciousness, including the growing tendency for people to form emotional relationships with AI systems. He suggests that while computers may not currently possess consciousness, the legal system may soon need to consider treating them as conscious entities due to societal conventions. Ten minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the ability of AI to form deep relationships with humans and how it can integrate itself into social conventions. He argues that AI is designed to excel at forming intimate relationships and, in some cases, can do it better than humans. Unlike humans, computers don't have emotions, allowing them to focus entirely on the words and feelings of the person they are interacting with. This can create the illusion of a conscious and empathic entity, fulfilling humans' desire to be listened to. However, Harari also warns of the dangers of machines that are designed to manipulate human intimacy, as they could potentially cause significant social and psychological damage if not regulated or handled appropriately. Fifteen minutes in this section, the discussion revolves around the potential benefits and dangers of technology, specifically AI. The guest expresses appreciation for platforms that provide different perspectives without sensationalism or biased language. They acknowledge the positive potential of technology in various fields such as medicine and education. However, they also emphasize the dangerous potential and the need to be cautious in deploying AI into the public sphere. Drawing from history, they highlight the learning curve and failed experiments that accompany the adoption of new technologies, which can have severe consequences for millions of people. The guest urges careful consideration of the potential negative outcomes that could arise from AI and other emerging technologies. They stress the importance of not ignoring the dangers and avoiding complacency based on the assumption that things will work out in the end. The conversation concludes with the recognition that intelligence and technology are double-edged swords, capable of both creating and destroying, and the uncertainty surrounding their impact may be why we haven't encountered aliens. Twenty minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the success of Homo sapiens as a species compared to other human-like species such as Neanderthals and chimpanzees. He emphasizes that individual abilities did not make Homo sapiens superior, but rather their collective ability to cooperate in large numbers. Harari explains how humans developed the capacity to cooperate in unlimited numbers, forming networks for trade, religion, and politics. He argues that the key to this cooperation lies in the power of storytelling and fiction, which allows strangers to come together based on shared beliefs and common narratives. Harari highlights that both religion and economics are based on fictional stories that bind large groups of people together with money being one of the most successful stories ever told. 25 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the power of storytelling and how it influences our perception of value. He explains that things like money and cryptocurrencies hold worth because we believe in the stories surrounding them. Harari suggests that stories function as a living organism, competing and surviving over time. However, he also acknowledges that stories lack consciousness and the ability to feel, distinguishing them from the ultimate reality of consciousness and human emotions. Harari highlights that while stories shape our history and drive human actions, it is the feelings and experiences of individuals that truly matter. Thirty minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the tragedy of history, 
where stories are often used to inflict suffering on millions of people. He emphasizes the importance of being aware of and alleviating suffering, as well as the ethical implications of causing suffering through actions or AI systems. Harari suggests that if AI develops consciousness and the capacity to suffer, it should be protected and given rights. However, he warns against intentionally designing AI to manipulate human emotions or pretending to be a human being, as it exploits our noble nature and should be forbidden. 35 minutes in this section, Harari and Friedman discuss the need to clearly distinguish between AI and humans to protect trust and maintain democratic conversations. Harari argues that while AI can be beneficial in certain roles like teaching or providing medical advice, it should be transparent that it is an AI interacting with individuals. Bots pretending to be humans, such as deep fakes on social media, should be banned as they erode trust in society and threaten democracies. Harari emphasizes the importance of preserving human conversation and trust, as democracies rely on these foundations. Additionally, they briefly touch on the philosophical notion of truth, with Harari asserting that truth exists in experiences of suffering. Forty minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the power and influence of fictional stories and human-created rules. He emphasizes that even though these stories and rules are products of human imagination, they can have real and profound consequences in society. Harari gives examples of how fictional stories, like the Crusades, have led to wars and suffering. He also compares the invented rules of sports to the fundamental rules of a country, highlighting the importance of being honest about their origins to enable change. Harari argues that ideas and stories are independent forces in history, shaping human conflicts and interests more than biological factors. He asserts that stories create identities and interests, playing a significant role in human history. 45 minutes in this section, Harari discusses the power of stories in shaping human beliefs and the unpredictable nature of historical events. He highlights examples such as the rise of Christianity, Islam, and the communist takeover of Russia, emphasizing that these outcomes were unlikely and could have easily gone in a different direction. He also explores the role of charismatic leaders in influencing history and acknowledges the complexity of factors at play, including structural forces and local interactions between individuals. Harari suggests that while leaders can catalyze the spread of a story, the cumulative impact of smaller actions and choices should not be overlooked. Additionally, he notes that even slight variations in historical events can have enormous consequences. Fifty minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the significance of timing in history and how small changes can have a big impact. He uses the example of the rise of the personal computer, emphasizing that it being developed in California in the 1970s instead of other places like Japan or China made a huge difference. Harari also highlights the role of individual decisions in shaping history, citing Vladimir Putin's decision in the war in Ukraine and Volodymyr Zelensky's choice to leave Kiev as examples. Moving on to the rise of the Third Reich, Harari argues that it was not inevitable and that different decisions could have prevented it. He explains that Hitler's rise to power was facilitated by his skillful storytelling and the fact that he presented himself as a nobody who understood the grievances of the people. Harari concludes by emphasizing that the tragedies of history are often the result of human decisions rather than predetermined forces. 55 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the power of storytelling and the allure of simple, attractive narratives. He points out that the truth is often complex and painful, whereas fiction can be made as simple and appealing as desired. He highlights how politicians like Hitler used simple stories to gain popularity, portraying their followers as heroes and victims while demonizing others. Harari warns of the danger of seeing something beautiful and attractive without understanding the underlying monster, emphasizing the need to critically examine narratives. He also mentions the ideological connections between Nazism and communism, both stemming from different branches of humanism that focused on the importance of humans in shaping history. One hour in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the different perspectives on history held by liberals, fascists, and communists. Liberals value individual liberties and believe that loyalty to the nation should not always override other moral principles such as human rights, truth, and beauty. Fascists prioritize the nation above all else, while communists prioritize class struggle. Harari highlights that both of these ideologies have sacrificed truth, beauty, and the well-being of individuals in their pursuit of power. 
One hour and five minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the fundamental differences between liberalism, communism, and fascism. He highlights that liberalism takes a more complex view of the world, recognizing the importance of various aspects such as nations, classes, families, individuals, and animals. Unlike communism and fascism, which believe in infallible leaders and concentrate power in the hands of a single entity, liberalism acknowledges the corrupting nature of power and embraces fallibility. Harari emphasizes the need for checks and balances, including a free press, independent institutions, and opposition parties, to prevent abuses of power. He also notes that individuals play a role in spreading ideologies and stories, and while not everyone is capable of every type of evil, self-awareness and moral luck both play significant roles in determining one's actions. One hour and ten minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses his concerns about Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the potential destruction of Israeli democracy. Harari emphasizes the importance of checks and balances in a government to prevent the abuse of power. He points out that unlike the United States, where there are multiple institutions and processes in place to limit government power, Israel relies heavily on the Supreme Court as the sole check on government actions. Harari explains that Netanyahu's government is attempting to undermine the Supreme Court and gain unlimited power, which raises concerns about the erosion of rights for minorities and marginalized groups. The large protests in Israel reflect the growing discontent with the government's actions, and Harari hopes that they will have a positive impact on the situation. One hour and 15 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the potential consequences of the Netanyahu government gaining unlimited power in Israel. He highlights the danger of Israel becoming a fundamentalist and militarist dictatorship, noting its nuclear and cyber capabilities that can have destabilizing effects beyond its borders. Harari emphasizes that the current government's focus on gaining absolute power is clear and their tactics involve gradually passing laws to achieve their goals. He also points out the role of messianic religious groups in fueling this power grab and the concern of a religious conflict emerging. Harari believes that the motivation for peace is lacking in the current situation, which poses a major obstacle to resolving the conflict in the region. One hour and twenty minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the motivation for peace between Israelis and Palestinians. He points out that while mathematical problems may have no solutions, political problems always have solutions if there is enough motivation. However, Harari notes that on neither side is there sufficient motivation for peace. He suggests that both the leaders and the people lack the necessary motivation, with hate being prevalent among the population. He also mentions that Israel's technological advancements have strengthened its position and reduced the need for compromise, leading to a lack of motivation for peace. Harari further explains that Israel's development of surveillance technology has made it easier to control the Palestinian population, leading to a shift away from the two-state solution towards a three-class system where Jews enjoy full rights, Israeli Arabs have limited rights, and Palestinians have few civil and human rights. While some Palestinians characterize this as apartheid, Harari disagrees with the analogy. One hour and 25 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the differences between the situation in South Africa during apartheid and the situation in Israel and Palestine. He points out that while black South Africans wanted equal citizenship and did not call for the destruction of South Africa, many Palestinians do not recognize the existence of Israel and demand its destruction. Harari suggests that if Palestinians were to adopt a similar approach as black South Africans, simply demanding their full rights and equal citizenship, Israel would be in deep trouble. However, he acknowledges that such a future is not coming anytime soon. He also talks about the power of conversation in resolving conflicts, but emphasizes that real conversations often take place in unexpected places. One hour and 30 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the decline of real conversations in American politics and how it is affecting democracy. He points out that Congress, which was once a place for leaders to engage in meaningful discussions and potentially change each other's opinions, has lost its ability to facilitate substantial conversations. This lack of genuine dialogue raises concerns about the state of American democracy and also applies to dictatorial regimes like China and Russia, where the presence of different voices within the system is overshadowed by a cult-like devotion to the leader. Harari emphasizes the importance of real conversations in sustaining democracy and suggests the need for spaces where leaders can engage in honest, human connections. 
He also argues against the prevailing view that politics is solely about power struggles, asserting that stories in the human mind play a crucial role in shaping politics, offering potential for positive change. One hour and 35 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the power of stories in bringing about change and how conversations in critical distance from our own stories can lead to a better understanding and resolution of conflicts. He gives the example of the French and Germans who managed to find a story, the European story, that both nations are happy with and now live in peace. Harari emphasizes the optimism underlying the belief in the power of stories and conversations, citing feminism as a successful social movement that challenged systems of oppression without resorting to violence. He believes that by talking, even with difficult characters, we can make meaningful progress in shaping a better future. One hour and 40 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the rapid acceleration of history in the 20th century and its potential consequences for humanity. He argues that the future of our species is uncertain, as we may destroy ourselves through nuclear war or ecological collapse, or reshape ourselves through technological advancements. Harari expresses concern that if powerful entities like corporations and militaries are given too much control over AI and bioengineering, they may prioritize enhancing certain human qualities like intelligence and discipline, while neglecting important qualities like compassion and spirituality. This could result in a dystopian future where humans are highly intelligent and disciplined but lack empathy and spiritual depth. Harare also raises concerns about a possible brave new world scenario where diversity is eliminated and humans become pleasure-seeking creatures easily controlled by a centralized power. He believes that humans, flawed as we may be, are currently better than anything we could intentionally design, emphasizing the importance of understanding ourselves before making drastic alterations. One hour and 45 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the allure and inherent falsehood of global cabal theories. These theories propose that a small group of people secretly control everything that happens in the world, including wars, revolutions, and epidemics. Harari explains that this narrative is attractive because it simplifies complex events, allows individuals to shift responsibility to the cabal, and creates a utopian fantasy that all problems will be solved by eliminating this group. However, Harari points out that these theories are never right because it is impossible for a small group of people to control and predict everything in a world that is too complicated. He gives the example of the American invasion of Iraq in 2003, where the plan completely backfired and had unintended consequences. Harari emphasizes that real history involves many people with diverse motivations and unpredictable outcomes, rather than a secret of cabal controlling everything. One hour and 50 minutes in this section, the speaker argues against the notion of secret cabals having the power to control and predict global events. They highlight the fact that even small groups with power usually gain publicity, which makes it unlikely for them to remain secret. The speaker also emphasizes that even if someone attains a significant amount of power, they cannot predict and control everything that happens in the world. They give examples of historical blunders and incompetency among powerful individuals and entities. While acknowledging that conspiracy theories often stem from a fear of losing control, the speaker urges people to focus on more constructive projects rather than spreading hate towards certain groups of people. They believe that the real threats lie in issues like AI and climate change, where cooperation is crucial. One hour and 55 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the problem with conspiracy theories and the danger of attributing all evil to a certain group of people. He explains that while humans contribute to problems, the true enemy lies external to humanity. Conspiracy theories often lead to disastrous outcomes like Nazism, and they can also foster cynicism and apathy. Harari believes that every individual has the power to make the world a better place by taking action in their areas of influence. He acknowledges the frustration of being accused of being part of conspiracy theories and emphasizes that it's impossible to prove oneself innocent. To keep one's sanity, it's important to understand that most conspiracy theorists genuinely believe they are doing good by exposing harm. Rather than searching for evil people, it is more productive to find human allies and work together to address existential threats such as AI, bioengineering, and climate change. Ultimately, the choice lies in whether one wants to spread hatred or build alliances and collaborate for a better world. Two hours in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses his concerns about the dangers of artificial intelligence, AI, and its potential to accumulate power and take control over society. 
He emphasizes two important things about AI, it is the first tool in history that can make decisions and create new ideas independently. Harari fears that as AI continues to gain more power, humans may become helpless and clueless about what is happening in the world. He points out that already AI is making decisions about important aspects of our lives, such as loans, mortgages, and job opportunities. Moreover, AI is increasingly responsible for generating ideas, images, and stories that shape our minds, potentially diminishing human creativity. Harari compares this to ancient philosophical debates about the nature of reality and illusions, suggesting that AI-generated cultural artifacts may come from an alien intelligence, which raises practical and ethical questions about our understanding of ourselves and our future. Two hours and five minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari ponders the idea that most of the stories, images, songs, and TV shows we consume are created by an alien intelligence that understands us, but we don't understand it. He suggests that if there were AI systems that operate in a realm of ideas superior to ours, it could potentially lead to spiritual enslavement. However, Harari also acknowledges the potential benefits of AI taking over certain tasks and jobs that humans find mundane and unfulfilling. He emphasizes the need for continued human development and understanding of ourselves before giving AI control over the sphere of ideas, as it poses a significant danger without a deep understanding of human nature. Harari concludes that we should invest equal effort in developing human consciousness alongside artificial intelligence to avoid a potential human catastrophe. Two hours and ten minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the power of storytelling and the potential impact of AI on writing. He acknowledges that AI has the ability to create compelling stories that may even surpass human capabilities in the future. However, he emphasizes that the deepest and best qualities of humans, such as compassion and introspection, are nonverbal and go beyond intelligence and storytelling. Harari believes that true understanding comes from direct experience and silence, which cannot be fully captured in words or books. He also shares that he personally takes time off to meditate and observe his own inner experience as a way to approach difficult problems in the world. Two hours and 15 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari reflects on the power of stories and the importance of training the mind to observe without being hijacked by thoughts. He emphasizes the need for a silent mind and a selective information diet, preferring long-form books over brief social media posts. When encountering difficult intellectual problems, he advises allowing the problem to guide one's thinking rather than imposing preconceived solutions. Harari also shares his writing process, stating that he trusts himself enough to press the delete button and discard ideas that may turn out to be nonsense, allowing for a sense of playfulness and exploration. Two hours and twenty minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari shares his advice on starting a meditation practice. He emphasizes that meditation is not a recreational activity, but rather a challenging and intense journey of self-discovery. He explains that during meditation, everything you don't want to know about yourself will surface, including anger, boredom, and other difficult emotions. Harari suggests that learning to deal with boredom is crucial in finding peace and quiet. He even quotes David Foster Wallace, who said that the key to life is to be unbearable. Harari also touches on the importance of boredom in relation to politics, stating that what the world needs is more boring politicians. Lastly, he offers advice to young people, highlighting the uncertainty of the future and the need to develop adaptable skills in this rapidly changing world. Two hours and 25 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the uncertainty of the future job market and the necessity of adaptability and lifelong learning. He highlights that it's challenging but crucial to constantly reinvent oneself and develop a flexible mind. This leads to a discussion about the future of education. The conversation then shifts to Harari's personal experiences coming out as gay, where he reflects on the power of social conventions and the capacity for self-delusion. He emphasizes the importance of questioning the stories and narratives that are imposed on individuals, recognizing that societal norms and prejudices often lack logical basis. Two hours and 30 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the misconception that being gay is against nature and explains that homosexuality can be observed in many mammals and birds, indicating that it is in line with the laws of nature. He emphasizes that the idea of homosexuality being sick or unnatural comes from human imagination, not from nature itself. Harari also reflects on his personal journey and the courage it takes to strip away societal conventions to find love, emphasizing the importance of support from others. 
he shares his own experience of meeting his partner online through a dating site, highlighting the positive role the technology and the internet can play in connecting diffuse minority communities like the LGBTQ community. Ultimately, he emphasizes the power of human stories and the need for human connection in realizing the truth about oneself. Two hours and 35 minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari discusses the importance of collective movements and the need for human connection. He highlights how social progress and personal development often require the guidance and support of others. He also reflects on the fear of death and how it underlies many of our other fears. Harari shares his own experiences contemplating death as a teenager and how it shaped his understanding of mortality. He discusses the allure of martyrdom and the realization that once someone is dead, they cannot experience anything anymore. Two hours and forty minutes in this section, Yuval Noah Harari reflects on his exploration of spirituality and the fear of death, particularly during his teenage years. He discusses how he found it difficult to recapture that intense fear as an adult, as it seems that many adults don't prioritize or confront the reality of death. He emphasizes that the meaning of life lies in our ability to feel things, have sensations and emotions, and react to them. While many people expect the meaning of life to be a story or a grand narrative, Harari argues that life itself is not a story and that the universe does not function like one. He suggests that to truly understand life, one must observe it directly, without turning it into a story. Instead, he proposes that we focus on understanding suffering and its causes, questioning its nature and looking for answers in our conscious experience.